Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is one of one, but you can call me seven. And we continue forward in near Automata. We continue onwards, we don't stop. This route will be finished soon, I swear on it. Just a couple more episodes, maybe one or two or maybe three more, but I'm trying to make it shorter than route A, so let's do this. Operator 210 to 9S, this is your regularly scheduled contact. Hello. Yeah, yeah, no problems here. Copy that. I also need to inform you that the commander offers her personal praise for your recent achievements. Does she now? As a direct result, we are currently considering boosting production of your model. Wow! Really? I'm happy to hear it. I couldn't have done it without your support, Operator. You're Whoa. always so cool under fire, Whoa. not to mention beautiful. Hey. Flattery is unnecessary. No! Operator 210. Oh. Uh. Oh. oh! He did! He did mean it! He meant it. Why did you have to cut him off? I'm upset. I want them to love each other. Ah, hello. We're back. And this time, we've got something that is mightier than the sword. No, we're not here to kill you. We're here to fight the Lord of the Valley. Oh, here he is. No, he doesn't want to kill, though. He wants me to What's kill him. Saying? Don't listen to it, to be. Oh boy! Oh, my robot buddy got launched. Lovely. That's half his health, baby. Whoa! All right. There we go. Huh. <sighs> what was with that thing? It was talking. Maybe that machine who sent us here knows something about this. We should try asking her. All right, well, we got some materials for it. Do I just have a little little robot friend now? He's pretty great. Hello. It's you again. A question about the machines in the canyon? Yes, very dangerous. You should avoid them. Actually, we already took care of them. You what? I see. Then perhaps they can finally reach heaven. Come again? Many machines have thrown themselves into that canyon of late. They were trying to hurt themselves beyond repair. Found the remains of those who succeeded and fought those who did not. I know not what would drive them to do such a thing, but I pray regardless that their souls might reach heaven. Thank you for killing them. Souls in heaven, huh? Do yeah. either of those things exist? They'll find out in the end. Uh, I, I, I guess they so will. We. Oh! Okay, that's grim. <laughs> <laughs> I... I guess so. My god. What a... What a thing to ask and, and say to be. My goodness. You're not wrong, I guess. Ah, the data analysis. There we go. That's what 210 wanted. Now I just have to send it to her. Let's Alert. do it. Poor reception in this area is preventing data upload. Proposal. Unit 9S should move to an area with better reception. Thanks, Pod. Got it. 210, are you going to be grateful for this? This should be good enough. Yeah. Pod, upload that data to Operator 210. Affirmative. You should get me a call back, right? Yes! Operator 210 to 9S, come in. You gotta get me a date. This is 9S. I received the data you sent. It's fascinating. It appears to be the journal of a human who once worked in the factory. Ooh. What, like a diary? Yes. According to this, the man worked long hours on an almost daily basis. That's how it goes. He says, and I quote, They are working me like a machine. <laughs> working like a machine to build a machine? Humans truly were strange creatures. Metaphors, Sounds guys. Like Come on. I'll send you a reward later. Wait, I can get rewarded for doing this? I didn't say you would not get a reward. It's true. No, but... <laughs> Aw, I kind of love their relationship. Hey, hey don't disconnect me. <laughs> That's pretty reward. fun. Ah, uh, there's the person in the red hood. They're up there. Hello. Did you murder someone? Hey there. 
Say, nice hood. You make it? What, this? No, a girlfriend of mine gave it to me. This is the first time I've worn it in public. Do you really like it? Yeah, it's great. In fact, I wish I had one for myself. Do you happen to know where she got it? No, sorry. I didn't think to ask. Do you know where your friend is? Maybe I'll go ask her myself. Man, you really like this hood. Last I heard, she was out at the desert station. She shouldn't be hard to find. I think she's the only woman there. Jackass? Hope you managed to get a hood of your own. Sounds like that red hood was a gift of some sort. Yeah. Gifts are such a useless ritual. Not true. Wow, okay. That <laughs> Who hurt from? you, to be? It's rude to give a person something without their permission. What if they don't want That's it? That's fair. Mm, I think it's more about the feeling behind it. See, Ninas gets item, it. Right? Feelings are prohibited. Okay, yeah, Tubi. Yeah. You don't... One affirmation will suffice. Uh... Oh, for the love of... Fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One affirmation will suffice. Hey! Hey! He's giving you back talk because you're not being true to yourself, so st shut up. Stop it. Operator 210 to 9S. Come in, 9S. Hi, 210. I'm here. I've sent you a new data retrieval request. Please read it. Over. Hey, wait just a... Okay. She didn't even give me a chance to turn her down this time. Yeah, because she likes it when you do it. The desired contents of this request are spelled out below. Please gather the information... The following for information and analysis. Vestiges of human life from the large-scale ruins in the desert. These ruins are the remains of what was once a residential area, a complex of multiple dwellings. Photograph these vestiges and send them to me. Okay. Sure. So 210 is just a big nerd. 210 is just a huge, huge nerd. Hey, you two. I can actually see you guys now. Thank you again for your help. I know this is awkward, but if you have the time, we could actually use your assistance again. Don't you dare ask for more help. No, what is it? Do you need more parts to repair yourselves? I won't accept- Put your pride aside, you foolish man! We need the help and you know it. I know, but... Why must you always be so stubborn? Just let me handle this. Yes, we need your help, but not with finding parts. We're actually trying to flee to a land across the sea. Oh, how's that going to work? There's a sympathetic figure in the Resistance who's offered to help us. People refer to him as the Emancipator. However, he doesn't work for free. I'll be frank, we need 50,000 G in order to secure his services. Do I even have that money? We really don't deserve such generosity. But we'll pay it back someday, I swear we will. We... We had that money? Hey, I fought this machine before, right? Proposal. Enemy should be dispatched immediately. Yeah, golden boys. Leaving such a dangerous foe intact would be unwise. If you say so. You're probably right, Pod. All right, he's down. Nice. Forgive me, brother. Brother? Wait, there's more of these things? Yeah, what do you mean by brother? Oh! Whoa. Is this a pod? Hello! Hypothesis. The owner discarded this pod and left it in safe mode. Motives unknown. I wonder if we can use it. Pod, reset this and check the original owner ID. Yeah, third pod time? Activation complete. Access granted. Previous owner ID successfully overwritten. Special weaponry now available. Oh, wow. Well, there's our third pod. Our red hooded target should be in the desert. Mm -hmm. Stay alert. She could be our killer. But there's only one female resistance member at the de- hmm. I don't see her. Oh yeah, it's true. Hello. Let's ask that guy over there. Hello? Yeah, we're looking for- yeah! Every time there's an issue, old Jackass try to solve it with explosives or some other violent method. I think she's off doing geological research in one of the desert caves. I'll send you the coordinates if you want. If you're gonna head out there, just make sure you don't get caught up in one of her explosions, you hear? That feels like a threat. Hey, dude. What's up? Are you, um, jackass? Who wants to know? We've met you before. We're with Yorha. We're conducting a field investigation. Well, yippee for you. Listen, 
Did you happen to give a red hood to a friend earlier? That red is perfect for our new Yorha colors, so we were hoping to. That old piece of crap? Yeah, I gave it to her. Hell, I never wanted it in the first place. Uh, so it came from someone else originally? Did I stutter? Yeah, it came from someone else. I bought the stupid thing right after that explosion in the city ruins. Some resistance lady with red hair practically tackled me trying to get me to buy it. I only did it to get her off my case. Well, and because I thought it might look good on my friend. But if you tell her that, you're dead! A red-haired resistance member. The same color as our client's hair. What client? What the hell's going on here? Uh, nothing! It's just that... That's her nickname. The client. That's even stupider than Jackass. <laughs> that lady was pretty creepy, though. Kept grinning at me like a crazy person. Grinning? Uh, well, thanks for your help. We'll be on our way. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is this gonna be much darker than I bargained for? <laughs> I've got a feeling that it is going to be. Alert. The description of a female resistance member with red hair matches that of our client. But if it's the same person, why would she have had the killer's hood? Because she's the killer. Hypothesis. The red-haired resistance member is either the killer or an accomplice. Hmm. It says ledger on it. Oh, well, more junk for the operator. Oh, nice. A shoe. Hmm? Must have belonged to a child. I'd say this counts as a remnant of mankind. Oh, here we go. A toy? I guess the operator would be interested in this. Okay, this should be enough. What do we have? Broken toys? Dirty ledgers? Small shoes? Yeah. Pod, take a photo of this junk and send it to Operator 210. Affirmative. He's gonna call us right away. Operator 210 to 9S. Hello, Operator. <laughs> How can I help you? I've received your data. Great. Does it seem useful? That depends on what I do with it. Oh, all right. It is, however, fascinating. <laughs> I was aware that humans used to live in groups. But I did not know they coexisted in such a wide variety of ways. I'm sure you're aware that most humans subsisted in small familial units. Yes. Uh, familial? Yes. A family is a group of people that share a connection by blood or social custom. Correct. If androids had a similar system of families... <laughs> Operator? Are you there? What are you thinking? I've said too much. No! I must return to my... What do you mean?! Stop it! And she disconnected me. No! We were so close. Oh. I have additional information to relate. I've sent mail with a reward. Please read it. And 9S, thank you. Man, she disconnected me again. Well, if she's thanking me, I guess it must have gone okay. Yeah. Uh, right? Purpose of question unknown. <laughs> It's very sweet. Oh, I wonder if this is gonna be like a 6-0-esque quest for 9S and 210, where this very different, you know, this very different woman uh, shows a different side of herself in a very different way to 6-0. Oh man, I'm excited. Analysis of the information you sent is complete. I believe I mentioned this already, but this societal unit called a family is truly fascinating. This will be of great use for future research. Your help is appreciated. Oh man, she sounded, she sounded almost emotional there. She was right there. She was right there. And guys, I just need these androids. I just need the characters that we know to just love each other, to just be people, be the people that they already are. They're like almost there. They just need a couple of other things, some experiences, some just, they just need a, just they, ah! Oh boy. Give us your money and your life. Oh, there's a and bunch of there's uh -oh. a bunch of dudes in cowboy hats. What the? They're like bandits. Yeah. The hostile machine life forms have been defeated. Analysis. Their garments were based on a subset of human culture. Yep. Human culture? Examples of said clothing can be found in motion pictures that humans created for entertainment purposes. Westerns. More specifically, they were from a genre known yeah. as Westerns. They chronicled warfare in a certain region of yeah. the planet. Warfare as entertainment? What were humans thinking? Lots of things. We were thinking lots of things. <laughs> a statue of a young woman. The words on your wedding day are carved into it. 
Perhaps this is a representation of the bride? This reminds me of something I've recently discovered in the course of my work. It appears that this area used to be known as Facade. As the name suggests, the residents of Facade all wore masks as well as unusual clothes. They also spoke a language unique to their people. Anyway, listen to me ramble. Thanks again for your help. Please, take this, okay? Oh, a spear! And the quest is done. What happened? You alright? The Emancipator attacked. He was swindling us from the start. What happened to the woman who was with you? She fled. She was trying to act as a decoy in order to keep me safe. Yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah. Here's your biocode. It should help you find her. Okay. Pod, scan this biocode and run a positional search. Yeah, we gotta find her. Exact position unknown. Data regarding her last known location does exist, however. The unit in question was most recently seen in the amusement park ruins. Well, got it. We gotta hurry. Oh, there you are. Are you okay? Well, you've certainly taken damage, but it's nothing that can't be repaired. Memory alloy required to. That's fine. We've, we've got some. We've got some. Oh, Pascal! Pascal, what are you doing here? I was concerned about the two androids who were staying in our village, so I decided to look for them. During my search, I noticed that one of their signals had suddenly grown quite weak. You have the material she needs, yes? If so, please give it to me so I can perform the repairs. Go ahead, Pascal. Something wrong? This android is female. You are male. Perhaps you might close your eyes until I'm done? Yeah, yeah, let me just close my- okay. Cool. Let's take this here, patch up this area, and done. Phew! She should be alright now. You have any information about my friend? He's fine, you don't need to worry, do we? Oh! Oh! Thank goodness, you're alive! I'm sorry, I should have been stronger for you. Oh, guys. However, what do you intend to do now? Someplace safe, yeah. By our former friends and hunted by machines? I can't take that anymore. But if this is going to be my life, I'd rather return to the Resistance. If we reformat ourselves and reset our memories, I'm sure Anemone will take us back. But if we do that, I'll forget how I feel about you. If we don't, I'll eventually grow to hate you, do you understand? Even if I'm reformatted, I know I'll fall in love with you. Will you erase our memories and bring us back to the resistance camp? Okay. You can begin with me. We should reboot here in a little while. Are you ready? Me? No, I'm fine. Th what? Your formatting procedure was perfect. I'd expect nothing less from a cutting-edge Yorha model. Wait, what are you... Don't you understand? We're too weak. That's why I knew I had to convert one of us into a combat model. Then we'll never have to run from anything again. But I can't do that without a complete system reset, which is why I had you format him. Now it's time to strengthen him up. I'm going to delete all of his namby-pamby ways. I need someone more forceful in my... I don't know if I like this. I don't think I do. Don't me look at me like that. This is the sixth time I've had him formatted. It's never been a problem. I don't know if this is enough payment for all you've done, but please accept it. Anyway, we'd better get going. The next time you see this guy is going to be incredible. All right. Uh, 9S? What was that about? Women can be pretty scary sometimes. <laughs> I will bear that in mind. Hello. We're back, game dev. Yay. Now, an amazingly fun game is now more difficult. You can be surprised if you can debug it for me. Sure. You got it. Alrighty. You debugged the game. Thanks. Okay. I guess I did. You know something? I don't think my fun game is hard enough yet. We need to reach beyond typical market boundaries to include hardcore gamers. That's me! I'm a hard- that's me! I'm a hardcore gamer! A five-color cable. Okay. Muchas gracias! 
Best of luck tracking down that five color cable. You can salvage them from the machines in the desert. Just go ahead and rip it right out of them. I thought those machines were your friends. Creativity is my friend. All right, buddy. Sure. Hey guys, Editor7 here. You wanna know something fun about making YouTube videos? Sometimes you will lose your game audio for no reason at all. So here's what we're going to do. I'm gonna hand this off to Narrator7, who's gonna take you through all the events that happened in this last section of the video, which coincidentally is three hours of footage. So it was going to be pretty in-depth and there's gonna be a lot more in this video, but now we're just gonna cut it down. Thank you for that, Editor7. This is Narrator7, and we are going to speedrun the last section of this video. Are you guys ready? Okay, three, two, one, let's go! We got the game dev machinist cable, he made a game, we broke it. It was fun, it made the music 8-bit for like a minute, and then it was cool. Okay, moving on. Then we ran into our last set of gold enemies, and they were really, really interesting. And by that I mean really depressing, because this is what one of the machines had to say. I'm gonna do my best to voice act it, because again, I have no game audio. Just kidding, not going to voice act the robot, because nobody needs to hear that, because nobody wants to hear that. But here's exactly what he said. Essentially, this robot has been out hunting androids because, well, I mean, he's been out hunting us because we killed his family. To him, we killed his brothers and his sisters, and everyone is gone, and... He's just telling us to finish him because he was trying to achieve his revenge and he was going to die even if he did manage to kill us But we got all of them and then him and he doesn't have the strength to continue And he said he was sorry and that he couldn't avenge them And he asked us how long we are gonna torment him and then he died And it was pretty sad and dark and it keeps happening in 9S's route I don't understand After that we went back to the city center to talk to our red-headed friend who turned out to be a Yorha E-type unit they were, in fact, not an actual member of the Resistance. They were a Yorha android who was sent to infiltrate places and kill people. The E in Type E stands for execution, and this particular android has killed many of its friends, comrades, lovers, and you name it, she's killed it. It was super fun for her because she realized that she was a Type E robot who had wiped her own memory because she couldn't handle the guilt of all the people that she had killed uh, when we dug around the memories of her lover. Yeah. This road just keeps getting darker and darker. And then I took over a robot and did this for a little bit. After that, it was time to go back to Pascal's village and give him the information about the old world that he was seeking, which ended up being the secret of nuclear fission technology, which is something that was lost to the machines and everybody else on Earth long, long ago. Pascal didn't accept the information because he's a good boy and we love Pascal. And then once we head into the flooded city to help the resistance, we were met with this Adam and Eve cutscene, which is so incredibly sad. Eve asks Adam why they're reading books and if they can't just transfer the data instantly into their minds because they're androids and they can do that. And Adam says that it's because the acquisition of knowledge is really important to be as human as possible. I mean, that's not exactly what he said, but that's essentially what he said. And Eve was just like, oh, okay, uh, once we finish reading, can we go play outside afterwards? And he says, yeah, as long as we finish the book. And he says, okay, I'm gonna try extra hard to finish this and it was it sucked and i hated it and then it was time to fly off and go fight that big sea machine monster thing from route a that you guys remember but this time we're gonna see it from 9s's perspective oh boy there he is look he's so dangerous all right time to shoot him in the mouth it was a lot easier with 2b picking when to fire and not you know me and then as you guys know he stanced up on us and then hit us in the face and then pascal caught us and then here's what we didn't see in route a 9s goes back to the missile gets on the missile and then rides it into the sea monster machine thingy and like you know dies except he doesn't really die but like why was that the plan i mean you know it worked i just don't understand why i had to be on it i mean look at him he's just i mean i think he's on it maybe i'm wrong guys maybe he was just controlling it but regardless we know he ended up in a bad place and then after setting up a little date exchanging play date with pod 153 and pod 042 we ended up here yeah, this is the visual representation of the machine network, and we learned a lot of things here. And I'm just gonna cut the music here, put on something a little more appropriate, because I think I'm just gonna let this rip. Uh, it's just me, it's just me as 9S, and a lot happened here, so I'll see you guys on the other side of this. Hacking space. How did I... I find myself in a bizarre memory storage area, stretching as far as I can see. It's a maze, a labyrinth, a massive interconnected network. I've never seen anything like it. Oh, 
Is this for the machines? It must have been created by the machines. So then, what am I doing here? I am 9S. That's all I can remember. Large portions of my memory may have been destroyed. What if I forget everything? My memories? Myself? My... Woman I love? 2B maybe? Or 210? Who am I to judge? Just follow the emergency manual and execute the memory recovery program. The recovery program begins to fill in the blanks in my memory. They drift back like missing letters filling out a word. The bunker, 2B's plan. The colossal machine life form. The last resort missile strike. Preservation mode was activated at the moment of the blast. It halted most of the safeties the network had in place. Okay. It must have been that EMP blast. It hooked me up to the machine network too somehow. Are there just other ways to go or are we just gonna... It took a while, but the recovery program managed to restore most of my memory functions. However... Still can't establish a link to my body. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do but examine the surrounding memory space. It looks like the machines gathered and stored a lot of info in here. It all seems pretty random at first, but on closer inspection, I learn how it's all connected. There are a variety of entries, such as data on human history and philosophy. <laughs> but what's really strange are the records of machines stored next to those. In the politics category are records of the machine's own governmental endeavors. They tried all sorts of things. Absolute monarchies, republics, democracies, and that wasn't all. They also engaged in other scholarly pursuits such as philosophy, mathematics, science, and social criticism. It's like the network was copying every possible human behavior and discipline. Almost as if... As if what? Is this Adam's doing? It's, it, it must be Adam's doing. We knew they were imitating humans. We knew this. Why? Life finds a way? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. That's what we're here to find out. I dive deeper into the records. I can find no indication of the machines creating new cultures or values. They only imitate human behavior. The strange thing is, if a unit fails, it fails in exactly the same way the next time. For example, if a machine forms a dictatorship that eventually collapses, it won't try a new type of government. It just forms a new dictatorship. Or if it plants crops and they die, it just tries the same thing again. And again, and again, and again. They keep performing the same behaviors. They don't ever learn. When it comes to combat, the machines show overwhelming adaptive behavior and evolutionary speed. So why do they insist on imitating humanity? And more specifically, why do they imitate their failures? It's almost as if the objective is failure itself. I sense a change in the data. Some kind of movement. I hone my perception and hold my breath. I... I hear something. A distant voice. I and an now. All androids, there's something there. Something clearly intelligent. What is it? Oh, please don't let that be the last one. I want to know. What the heck was that? Yeah, they're talking. Here we go. I announced all androids. The words shimmer into focus. The voice grows clear in my mind. It is Adam, a machine made in the image of a man. We machine life forms have evolved, he says. We made war, learned, grew, and thus we gained a new consciousness. Indeed, it is as if a new form of existence has been born. Lies! Nothing but lies from mere machines! Adam laughs. And yet you androids claim to be alive? How very odd. You are puppets who lack even your own free will. No! You're wrong! His words flow through me as if they were poured into my ear. How am I wrong, boy? I'm... We're... 
Perhaps you have a will after all, he chuckles. Perhaps you have desires. Now you see, boy, the true meaning of life is hatred. You're wrong. A vile hatred slumbers in the depths of your heart. You're wrong. The more you try to hide it, the more that darkness grows. Wrong, 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 wrong. Damn it. We were made to protect mankind. We're not the same as you machines. All who live are slaves to desire. Such internal appetites are what give our lives meaning. Some seek beauty, others serenity. For me, hatred is the- I'm not like that! <laughs> oh yes you are. You do not trust anything. You want to destroy everything. You have lost hope in everything. You want to obtain everything. You want to be loved by all. I don't know how to react to that. <laughs> oh my god. He's goading 9S into... I mean, let's be real, guys. The fact that now both machines and androids have gained sentience... I mean, at first I think the androids definitely did not have sentience and then through their experiences on Earth and then with the resistance androids and now with the machines and the fact that they are sort of coexisting and all of these experiences and this data that everyone has access to because at the end of the day they're all AI, they're all machines, it all sort of melds into this singular human sentient experience and then this... Oh. This had huge impact on, at least on me. It hit me. It hit me right here. It hit me right here. It's a, it's a funny line. It's a real line. It's authentic. It's like, oh, uh, it's such a dumb thing for me to fawn over because it's such a, it's degenerate. I mean, you know, but they are carnal desires. Carnal desires. And, and Adam knows. 9S knows. 9S and 2B are all about denying their humanity because that's all they've done. And they deny the humanity and the sentience of the machines as well. Whether or not that's right, I'll leave that up to you guys to interpret and decide, but... This is crazy. <laughs> and I'm loving it! You're thinking about how much you want to fuck 2B, aren't you? <laughs> Reality stained by lies. Stop! Stop it! Hatred pouring into you. You're wrong, damn it! Overflowing desire. I'm. I'm not like you! Your true self. We're not the same. Stop it. Stop it. It's not my fault, okay? Damn it! I. I st oh, okay. It's not my fault, 9S. Is, is that what you said? Help me. Now, I know we've all seen this before, but it caught me off guard, so I still reacted this way when we actually got to it in the game. Oh, 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 my God. Oh my god. I had a feeling that this is what this was going to end with, but... Ah! Oh. It's... It never... It never ceases to be brutal like this. 
it's always the same. They jump scared me with that. Golly. Do uh do you guys even have reproductive organs? That's not a that's not a question route we should follow. Don't ignore that. I didn't ask it. Shh, stop. 9S has been irreparably changed. At least I think. It's not my fault. I'm not like you. Both you and him denying your humanity. Your true selves. Adam is right! It's not even like he's a guess, villain. Oh. Golly. And then we ended up back at the bunker. Tubi brought us there, and we needed to recover while she went down back to the surface. I don't remember why she went down without us, but I think she was sent to the resistance camp, but we as 9S ended up back here trying to recover our memory and, and you know, make sure that, well, it wasn't even recovering our memory, it was just making sure that everything was okay via diagnostics. But we ended up in the bunker server with all of the data, we learned some things, and this is what we learned. Make of it what you will. I'm still trying to figure out what it means. Detected. Council of Humanity and Project Yorha Records Index. Alert. We are not authorized to access this data. Man, this stuff is all wrong. I need to check this out too. Oh, oh, oh. I'm actively being repelled by this. So, I'm hacking. This would definitely be round, or excuse me, grounds for reformat rebooting in a full memory wipe. An attack barrier? Really? Why the heck would they install one of those in this server? Note that these documents are classified level S confidential and are not to be disclosed to any persons affiliated with Yorha aside from the commander. Index, Project Yorha Outline, Yorha Forces, Yorha Unit Combat System, Bunker Administration, Chain of Command, Council of Humanity, Development Department, Backdoor, Support units, black box, resistance communications network. Permission is to be received from the designated parties responsible for each entry prior to viewing. Let's see. Looks like info about how the Council of Humanity was formed as part of Project Yorha. Yeah? Wait, isn't that backwards? After a long period of battles and adventures, the Prophet spoke. Oh, grant me the mercy of the land. Oh, grant me the joy of the heavens. Release me from my yoke of iron. Thus shall our souls be. Souls? Prophecy? Release me from my yoke of iron? And then if you guys remember, Tubi ended up in trouble and 9S hacked into the factory from the bunker, which was really, really fun because we got a whole hacking landscape where then we ended up as a robot, as a machine, which I'm sure that you guys remember. And then it was a lot of Mario-esque platforming as a machine, which isn't as bad as it sounds. It's actually pretty fun. And then we ended up unlocking all the gates and we found a bunch of secrets and then we had to f hack into the whole factory's mainframe, which was this big, just big hacking fight, essentially this big hacking mini game. But once we did it, Tubi did her thing and all was well. And then once we got to the very end of that fight, we got this, which I will read out. After a long period of battles and adventures, the prophet spoke. Oh, grant me the mercy of the land. Oh, grant me the joy of the heavens. Release me from my yoke of iron. Thus shall our souls be saved. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Which is super fun because those were the words that 9S heard when he was in the server for the bunker. And that's all. Thank you guys for listening. This has been Narrator7, and I will hand it back to Video7, who will lead you guys through the outro. There's a lot there. This is gonna be a long video. It's gonna be a lot, but golly, was that good! Oh, this route. Very good. I am enjoying myself, and I hope that you guys are as well. So, oh gosh. There's so much to talk about. I think there definitely is going to have to be a, a video essay on this, especially after I play Neo Replicant. I don't know if I'm going to do that on the channel, but we'll see what you guys want. So I hope that you guys enjoyed that. I definitely did. And I will see you guys in the next video. So for now, have a good rest of your day, and I will see you soon. Bye!